Nearly 20 years ago, NASA produced this beautiful image called Interplanetary Superhighways. This image illustrates that we believe that there are these very unusual and very interesting space manifolds or space formations that can essentially provide a very interesting way for us to travel from one planet to another. But after 20 years, we still haven't really discovered what they are and haven't really found a good way to essentially predict them. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a relatively recent study that might have actually discovered at least one way we can sort of predict these manifolds, at least to some extent. And this interesting study might actually one day allow us to travel across planets, or across the solar system that is, in a relatively quick and also relatively cheap way. But let's actually discuss this in a little bit more detail because there are a lot of things here that, well, we frankly don't really understand just yet. And to try to understand all of this, I guess let's start right here. We know that black holes warp space around them. You can obviously see it right there on the screen. This is a space warping effect created by an extremely, extremely massive and compact object. But we know that anything that has mass and energy produces these ripples, although they're not usually that easily visible. And the more complex the system, the more space folding and different types of manifolds end up forming in the region. Now one of the best examples of this so-called space manifold, or the formation of these very peculiar gravitational effects that kind of cause the space to produce unusual effects, at least for the solar system, are what's known as the Lagrange points. These are very stable orbital points that are created by the interaction between two massive objects, in this case the Sun and Earth. And these five points create five very specific regions in the orbit of a smaller object orbiting the larger object, where we can place another object to be in the same orbit as the smaller object. So in this case, if we were to place, for example, some sort of a large satellite right here, or right here, or right here, it would be able to orbit along with the Sun and not destabilize and, for example, get kicked out of the solar system or fall back onto planet Earth. And these, in essence, are these space manifolds which in this image you can see visually are created by the interaction between the Earth and the much more massive Sun. And theoretically we've discovered these objects many decades ago, with the first satellites to use these orbits being this beautiful satellite known as ICE, International Cometary Explorer. And back in 1978 it was placed in the L2 Lagrange point, which is roughly around 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth toward the Sun. But if this is what you get with two different objects, what are you going to get if there are more planets orbiting around the Sun? And this is where the complexity begins. And also why NASA created this image 20 years ago. Even back then we understood that there's a lot of complexity and a lot of interconnection between different planets, it just we're not entirely sure how to calculate it yet. So the more planets there are, the more complex these space manifolds become. Now if you want to learn more detail and more mathematics in regards to this, there's an entire article about this that I'm posting in the description. It's a pretty complex and actually somewhat difficult topic and there's a lot, a lot of math in it, but it is interesting nevertheless. But when it comes to the solar system, some of the biggest and essentially most influential manifolds are formed through the interaction of Jupiter with the Sun and to some extent Saturn and the Sun. And so these manifolds actually do form something extremely influential in the solar system, something that extends all the way to Neptune but also influences the internal parts of the solar system as well. And there is a mathematical way for us to try to simulate all of this and to try to essentially visualize all of this by using what's known as the Fast Lyapunov Indicator, also known as FLI which is a very interesting and a very mathematically thorough way to try to create different space manifold structures and to literally detect chaos in a very complex system. In other words, it's a way to sort of visualize and to simulate an extremely chaotic structure that has some sort of a space manifold or other manifold formation. And what this particular study that you can find in the description below decided to investigate and also what essentially the study discovered is the creation of various unusual formations, in this case space manifolds, by various planets as they interact with one another and as they interact with Jupiter and the Sun. And these manifolds, through the mutual interaction with the planets, can create these unusual structures, unusual tunnels or in some sense highways that actually encourage and influence 
what in some ways we can call chaotic or chaos transport. In other words, they create a kind of a tunnel-like structure that does change with time, where it's possible for an object to transfer between two planets relatively quickly with practically no energy loss whatsoever. Now, naturally, this doesn't mean that we just discovered a way for us to get from Earth to Mars in like a week or so. That's actually not at all what we've just found. What we did discover, however, suggests that it's possible for a typical object like an asteroid to move between Jupiter and Saturn in just a few years with absolutely no energy use. And this, in some sense, at least hypothetically, can become a way for us to transfer between planets much quicker than previously. So even though it took Voyager craft approximately 12 years to get to Neptune, if we were to find a way to exploit the space manifolds and if we were to find a way to precisely calculate the most efficient orbit or the most efficient path to Neptune using these space manifolds, it might save us a few years of time, possibly even helping us get here within only about five to six years. So ultimately, this could result in our understanding of how to create, um, well, basically a super highway across the solar system, where we can now start saving years and years of travel and also a lot of fuel at the same time. But even though we're kind of still far away from that part, this also can help us understand why, for example, certain comets especially the objects we often refer to as the Jupiter family comets, can often change their orbits quite dramatically, moving from the outskirts of the solar system to the inner solar system, which we today believe is actually directly related to these space manifolds. At the same time, a lot of different types of gravitational instability, like for example of these objects that you see in green, known as centaurs, can obviously be explained by the interaction of these different space manifolds. Some of these objects stay relatively stable for at least a few hundred thousand years, but some of them can only be stable for a few decades. And it was very difficult for us to explain why some of these centaurs end up becoming comets and coming closer to the sun itself. And now using the theory from this particular paper, we can obviously explain it as one of these objects just going through one of these interplanetary highways and being guided through these tunnels, coming closer and closer to the sun. And a lot of these simulations from this paper basically show that uh, Jupiter is the most influential creator of these interplanetary highways. These space manifolds, for the most part, are formed by the interaction of Jupiter and the sun, and some of the secondary ones do form through the interaction with some of the other massive planets as well. Now, the thing is, none of these manifolds, none of these tunnels, if you want to call them that, stay stable. They do destabilize and they do change with time, which of course is related to the orbits of the planets around the sun itself. But being able to calculate where, for example, the next large manifold will appear that we can actually use for, for example, a transfer of a spacecraft to another planet is basically what all of this is about or at the same time being able to predict if one of the distant trans-Neptunian objects becomes sort of embedded in one of these systems and then gets transferred to the inner solar system. In other words, this can allow us to predict orbits of objects a lot more precisely than we currently can with the current technology. And it can also, of course, help us predict any potential collisions with some of these large objects in the nearby future. Now, we know that nothing major is going to happen to planet Earth at least in the next few hundreds of years, but being able to use this new understanding of these space manifolds can help us predict this maybe even up to a few thousand or even a million years. And that's something that's sort of important for us, at least if we expect to somehow protect our planet for the next million years from these relatively dangerous collisions. But unfortunately, even in this study, the actual predictions and in some sense calculations are not really that thorough and that precise yet. A lot of it was still based on simulating particles, for example, orbiting Jupiter. In other words, it was somewhat similar to what I just did right here using Universe Sandbox. By placing the Sun in the middle and a few massive planets, in this case I placed two Jupiters, whose orbits you can see right here, and then adding a few particles, in this case um, a few hundred particles, we can sort of start seeing how some of the particles do end up really, really far away from everything. Which I guess is a little bit easier to see if we change the background. And a lot of these particles that got really, really far from the system, they basically went through these space manifolds and ended up getting kicked out of the inner star system. 
And so this is right now maybe one of the few ways we can kind of try to analyze and study these space manifolds. Because unfortunately there is no precise way of doing this just yet. These are still extremely complex systems that require a lot of calculations. But studies like this do serve as a kind of a pioneering project for us to eventually figure out how we can calculate all of these really complex interactions and thus find an extremely efficient way to travel across the solar system where a single travel from one planet to another might actually take much much shorter than it would be otherwise possible. Thus obviously allowing us to send more missions to faraway distances but also hopefully one day colonize other objects. But for now we don't really have a really good system to do this just yet. Even though originally NASA sort of proposed these ideas pretty much two decades ago, we still haven't found a very efficient way of doing this. So in some sense this image right here is still a little bit of wishful thinking. We kind of wish we knew how to do this, we just don't know how to do this yet. But that's of course why we're so excited to have papers like this and hopefully other scientists will pick up from there and discover how to do this a lot more efficiently with a lot more precision. But until then, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the papers in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can see me wearing right now. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out. And as always, bye-bye. And the next step would be to discover this in between stars, because we kind of also hope to be able to travel between stars at some point, although right now it's not really looking so good. So we need more studies, and we need more scientists, and maybe that's going to be you. So you know, don't give up, keep studying, and as they used to say, stay in school I guess, although technically you could learn everything online today. And that's of course something that I'm trying to encourage as well. Well, until next time, bye bye.